Hey, good evening, everybody. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Welcome to tonight's training. I am excited for the tips that I have for you. I'm going to give it a few moments just to let Facebook notify you that I am live. And so um, go ahead, take a few moments, chime in. As a matter of fact, here's what I want you to do. When you do chime in, do me a favor and put your name as well as the city that you are, that you live in. Okay. And we will get started momentarily. Okay. Hey, by the way, can you all hear me? If you can hear me, can you do me a favor and just make the comment? Because I want to make sure that you can hear me. So come on in, state your name and your city, and we are going to get started. Give us about mm, 60 seconds here. Look, I am truly, truly excited um, for what we're going to be sharing tonight. So come on in. All right. Come on in. I want to make sure that you all hear some sound. Hey, okay. Evening, yep. You can. You can hear some sound. So do me a favor again. Come on in, state your name and your city. For those of you who are new, maybe you have uh, just come in contact with me through my Facebook page or maybe you saw tonight's title and you like, oh, that's something that I need to know. Look, my name is LaShonda Lee. I am the CEO and founder of Walk in Favor Life Coaching. I help women who struggle with getting unstuck, discover resilience so they own their brilliance and live life authentically and unapologetically. It is a goal, a passion of mine that women live their lives where they are happy, successful and fulfilled. And you can find out a little bit more about me by going to my website, LaShondaLee.com, or you can go to WalkInFavorInc.com. And so look, Go ahead, state your name and your city so that we can go ahead and get started. So look, if you haven't already done so, you are going to want to grab something to write with and grab something to write on because these tips are going to be amazing. All right. And so look, let's go ahead and get started. Welcome to the live. Those of you who are in a position to type out the tips that I'm going to share tonight, will you please do so? Because I do realize there'll be some folks listening in via the replay. But tonight, I want to share with you four tips, four powerful tips, let me say that, on how you can change the way you look at things so the things you look at change. All right. And you may be in a position right now where circumstances and situations and it's still early in the year. Um, they're coming at you left and right. And maybe you're feeling a little bit overwhelmed. Maybe you're feeling a little bit defeated. Look, I want you to take tonight's training seriously. And so um, how did this all get started? Last year, the latter part of last year, I began grooming um, the women that I work with and preparing them to step into 2020 bigger, better and bolder. And what does that mean? It simply means that you have to leave behind anything that did not serve you in the past and shift and make a turn so that you can chart a new path for a life that's filled with happiness, success and fulfillment. So how many of you know that when you make a decision that you are going to live big, live bold, live better, live greater, that you're going to go after some things that you typically would not go after because you were afraid, right? How many of you know when you make a bold decision like that, circumstances and situations start hitting you from the left, the right, before you and behind you, and it's designed to make you question if you're on the right path is designed to make you wonder, do you have what it takes? Right. And so if you find yourself in that situation where you said 2020, I'm going to do more than I've ever done, but now you're facing resistance. It seemed like chaos is coming at you left and right. I want you to know you're in the right place. Okay. You're in the right place. Don't quit. Don't give up. And so over the last week, 
um, some of the women that I work with, they've been reaching out to me and they said that, you know, right now they're in a place where they're emotionally, mentally and even physically drained regarding some of the circumstances um, that have shown up in their lives. And they're feeling like defeat is knocking at their door and maybe you're in that same situation. And so tonight I just really wanted to come on and do this live to um, to offer them as well as you some tips as well as um, things that you can use to overcome situations that you feel that may not be within your control. And so who can benefit from these tips tonight? If you are that person that easily get disheartened and overwhelmed when you face adversity and problems, then these tips are for you. If you're the person who would like to develop the habit of thinking about their difficulties and their struggles in a more optimal way so that it can benefit you because we've been promised that we will experience trials and tribulations. However, we've also been told to be of good cheer. So if you want to find out how to, um, how to develop really the habit of thinking about those difficulties and struggles in more optimal ways, then guess what? These tips are for you. And if you are just that person who wants to learn how to stay positive, resourceful, and focused, even in the midst of adversity, then these tips are for you. Okay. And so think about it. Life is a journey. Yes. But some people walk through this life, this journey um, without direction, without focus or purpose. And because of that, they are blown here and there and everywhere by all kinds of circumstances and situations. And it can really appear to get to a place where they never seem to find their own lane. Right. And so I found through coaching women that a major source of stress that they feel is that they lack control over or they feel that they lack control over situations in their lives. But I want you to know this. If you change your perspective, then you will begin to see that you actually do have more control than you thought about. And so tonight, I want to really share with you four things that you will do that will help you change your perspective. And so that's why I said, listen, if you can change the way you look at things, then the things that you look at change. And so what do you do when you have this situation that you feel you're out of control, is stressing you out, is making you doubt your, your, your next step, or maybe you just don't even know what to do. And so here are a few, four things or a few things that you could do. Let me find my my um, notebook. Here's what I want you to do. The first thing I want you to do is get it out of your head and put it on paper. Get it out of your head and put it on paper. Why? Because as long as you keep this thing in your head, it's going to remain an emotional situation. And the last time I checked, our emotions, some days are up, some days that they are down. And so you don't want your emotions to begin controlling the situation that you are in. You want to make it logical. All right. So the first thing you want to do is get that situation out of your head and put it on paper. All right. Get it out of your head and put it on paper. And so here is the first thing that I want you to write. Whenever you find that situation that you feel is causing you stress, is making you feel defeated. Um, it seems like you don't have any options because you feel like you don't have control, the first thing that you want to do in your journal is you want to write this. What is the situation that is out of my control? That's the first thing you want to write. What is the situation that's out of my control? All right. So type, put that note in. What's the situation that's out of my control? All right. And so it's sort of like how I just did it here. What is the situation that's out of your control? And then really just write that thing out. Right. What if the situation that's out of your control is, I don't know, 
a promotion. That's the situation that's out of your control. You don't know if you're going to um, get this promotion. You don't know if you're going to get this raise and you just don't know. And so it's, it's drawing in this level of stress. All right. So now that you have written down the situation that's out of your control, the next thing I want you to do is write down what you can't control. Simply look at the situation and identify what you can't control. So that's the second thing you want to write. What you can't control. All right. You see that? What you can't control. Why is this important? Because sometimes we stress out on stuff that we can't control. And if it's something that you can't control, then you have to learn how to let go and let God. Right. We say it all the time. But how many times do you really let go? All right. And so the second thing is, what is it about this situation that I cannot control? Here's the third thing you want to write. What can I control? Right. What can I control. And so let's think about it. The situation that's out of your control is, I don't know if I'm going to get this promotion. I don't know if I'm going to get this raise. All right. What can you, what is it that you just can't control? I can't control how many people are going to apply for this position. I can't control if, if the boss sees me as a valid candidate. I can't control that. Right. Those are the things that I can't control. And so that's why I step in to say, what is it that you can control? Well, I can control if I prepare myself for the promotion. Do you see that? This is what I can control. So we are shifting from the things that you cannot control and we're moving towards the things that you can control because when you feel that you have a little bit more control over the situation, then you have choices, you have options and the stress will decrease. And so the third thing is what can you control and the fourth thing is action steps. Identify the action steps to improve the situation. Action steps to improve the situation. All right. And so notice that I didn't say action steps to control the situation. I said action steps to improve the situation. And so here it is. You see mine? What's the situation that you cannot control? What is it about that situation that you can't control? Now shift to what can I control? And then lastly, the action steps to improve the situation. So now that you have told yourself, you know what? I can't control whether I prepare myself for this promotion or pre prepare myself for this raise. And so now what are the action steps? Well, I can identify any areas that I need to improve in my soft skills. I can identify any areas I need to improve in my hard skills. Another thing that I could do is make sure that I have a positive attitude. Another thing that I can do is make sure that I'm meeting the expectations of my existing position and exceeding the expectations of my existing position. See, if you could take a situation that you can't control, but then go through the process of what you can control, do what you can do. And the rest is literally out of your hands. Does that make sense? And so here's the thing. You got to change the way you see it if you want the things that you see to change. And so now that we're at this place where I'm only focusing on action steps that I can control. Here are the lenses. Remember, I said change the way you see things. Here are the lenses that you want to look through. And these are four mental lenses that you can use to transform your perspective of the events and the circumstances that are taking place in your life. Because, see, these lenses are especially a value when you're facing that adversity, when you're facing problems, when you're facing difficulties. For instance, 
when faced with an overwhelming challenge. Take a moment to filter this challenge using the four perspectives that I'm getting ready to give you, right? Because these lenses will immediately shift how you think, how you interpret your predicament. And moreover, guess what? They will help you see things in a more optimal and advantageous way. And so you can then make the most of your predicament rather than spending your time feeling sorry for yourself. And so why does this matter? What lens you look through? It's amazing because I remember when my son, I think he was in first or second grade, right? And uh, we didn't realize that he needed glasses. And so he was having some challenges in school. And so finally, one of his teachers said, hey, why don't you go ahead and have his eyes checked out? Because he is demonstrating some of the signs that I did when I was a young girl. And lo and behold, the problem was I needed glasses. And so definitely we took our son to get glasses. And sure enough, he suffered from astigmatism. And so astigmatism allows you to see things differently differently than how they really are. You get where I'm going with this? And so finally, I remember when my son got his glasses and I was driving and he was in the back seat and he screamed out. He was like, mom, watch out for that tree. And it was so funny because my response to him was, son, I've always seen the tree. You are just now seeing that tree because he had the right lenses on. And so I want to share with you the four lenses that you need to look at your situation through if you want to bounce back so that you can be better, bigger, bolder, stronger than ever. And so the first thing you got to look at is the purpose. Anytime you're dealing with a situation immediately start looking through the purpose lens, right? Just to find purpose and meaning in every experience. Remember the Bible said what was meant for bad, God is turning and using for good, okay? So there is purpose in a situation. So I want you, when you're in that situation, instead of feeling sorry for yourself, instead of being beat up and beat down, I want you to use the lens of purpose to find the purpose and the meaning in that experience. So this is all about being more intentional with your decisions and your actions. It's also about being mindful of the desired outcome that you would like to create. Most times people just look at the problem and never look at the problem and then say, what is the outcome that I want? Well, I'm asking you to not only recognize the predicament that you're in, but be mindful of the desired outcome that you would like to create. You know, what do you gain from this situation? What could you gain from this situation? What meaning can you draw from this particular situation? Make sure you focus on the outcomes that you want and really reflect on the idea that things don't happen to you, they happen for you. All right. The second set of lenses that I want you to look at your situation through is through the lens of positivity. You know, use positivity to find value in every experience. You know, think about some of the hardships that you've had in the past. And now that you've overcome those situations and those hardships and you can see light at the end of the tunnel. The light was always there at the end of the tunnel. Think about it. God says, I know the plans that I have for you, plans to prosper you, not plans to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. So that means that even though you have to go through life circumstances, the end plan that God has for you is still a hope and a future. And so when you begin to go through your situations and your predicaments, You got to be able to find the value in every situation, in every experience. And this is about cultivating hope. It's about cultivating enthusiasm. It's about cultivating optimism, right? That's what this thing is all about. Hey, everybody, I see you. I see you. Okay. And so 
you got to ask yourself, how can I make the most out of this situation? If you are looking to overcome some of the challenges that are going to come your way, then you got to put on lens number two, which is the positivity lens. How can you make the most out of this situation? How is this situation challenging and subsequently changing you as a person? All right. Does that make sense? And if you all have any questions as we go through this, please go ahead, type your questions in because I will address them. So we've talked about the two types of lenses that you got to look. If you want to change the things that you're looking at, you got to change the way you see it so that you can see something different. The third set of lenses is the potential lens, right? Use the potential lens to find possibilities and opportunities in the experience. So not only do I want you to find the value in the situation, but I also want you to take a look and where are the possibilities? Because with every challenge, there is an opportunity buried in there. And so this is about you actively searching for solutions and answers that could help you overcome that difficulty that you're facing. It's about expanding the potential of the moment and making the most of the possibilities that exist. It's not if they exist, they do exist, right? And so ask yourself, what am I capable of doing in this situation? And how must I adapt and be more resourceful, right? You know, one of the things that I'm doing right now is learning Facebook ads because I have tried to do Facebook ads on my own and I haven't really been successful. I have failed. I have um, spent some money that did not render a return because I was doing it on my own. But once I was bumping my head, but I knew that there was an opportunity that was a that was a great opportunity to excel. I began to reach out. Who can I bring and help me be a little bit more resourceful? Right. And so I actually my coach sent me some information that literally led me to get, uh, enroll in this program that was going to teach me everything about Facebook ads from A to Z. And so the reason I share that is because you have to ask yourself when difficulties arise, when situations arise, you have to ask yourself, what am I capable of doing in this situation and how must I adapt and be more resourceful? I found out I needed to increase my skill set so that I could be more adaptable, be more resourceful so it can work for me. So remember, every problem contains the seed of an unexpected opportunity that brings with it new insights for progress and transformation. So stop running from these problems and situations and start looking at them differently through the lenses that I'm talking about today. And then the last lens that I want to talk to you about is the process. Use the process lens to find patterns in every experience, right? Think about it. If every time something uncomfortable shows up, you run, then you need to dig deep into that because uncomfortable people or let me say it this way. Successful people are comfortable with being uncomfortable. And so find patterns in every experience. Think about it. If you if, if look in relationships, if you look at the pattern and you're consistently um, finding or connecting with um with, uh, I don't even know how to say it, men or women um, that tend to misuse you, abuse you, um, not treat you with respect, then that's a pattern that you have to examine, right? And so when you are looking for the patterns, this is all about exploring better ways to solve the problems, to achieve your goals and to develop new skills. It's about finding ways to systemize things and build a framework that will improve your performance. All right. 
And so um, these are just four different ways or four ways that you must incorporate. So I'm not saying just do one or the other. I'm saying that you have to do all four, right? And you can really use these lenses as a reference guide and a reminder tool to help awaken new perspectives and insights when you deal with problems, challenges, and difficult moments in your life. You don't want to be the person that is always running. You don't want to be the person that's always doing less than what you're capable of just because a problem showed up or a situation um, showed up. You want to figure out one this situation is here for a reason. Remember I said earlier, don't look at it as things happening to you. Look at it as things happening for you. And so you got to be able in all those situations, those difficulties, those challenges, you have to be able to find the purpose in it. You have to be able to find um, the positive in it. Be optimistic. You have to be able to find what the potential is what the opportunity is. And then you have to find the patterns so that you can explore ways to solve the problem, achieve your goal and develop new skills. When you do that, that's what resilience is all about. And like I said, I help women discover resilience so they own their brilliance and live authentically and unapologetically. Once you can endure there's nothing that can stop you because it's impossible to stop a person who will not quit. And that's what resilience is about. Not quitting regardless of the circumstances and the situations, the bumps and the bruise, the valley moments, you still continue to go forward, but you have to look at it differently. You just can't see the problem. You got to see the purpose. You got to see the positives in it. You must see the potential and then you have to examine your process. So if you can change the way you look at things, then the things you look at will absolutely change. All right. And so, look, are there any questions that you all have tonight? All right. Any questions, any feedback that you want to share tonight about this? Maybe you're dealing with a situation right now and you're like, LaShonda, I've been beating my head over and over and over and over again. And I just cannot figure it out. Maybe you want to share and we can just, you know, kind of throw out some things that could possibly help you. All right. And so I know the broadcast is probably two or three seconds delayed. So if you have any questions, anything that you want, um, any feedback, um, go ahead and type it in so that I can see. And so while you type in, I am going to um, give me some water. Any questions about anything? So remember, as we started I gave you tips on how to put this thing on paper, four questions to ask yourself. And once you get those four questions answered, then you will be in a better position to look at your situation through the four lenses that I spoke about tonight. So any questions, any questions? I'll give it a few moments and then we will go ahead and end for tonight. Do me a favor and share this broadcast, too, because I know some good stuff. I'm sure it helped you go ahead and help somebody else by sharing this broadcast on your timeline. All right. Let me see. All right. So it doesn't look like there are any questions. So I'm going to go ahead. Oh, okay. Oh, thank you, Anita. I thank you. I thank you. I appreciate it. And so uh, Anita is an incredible prayer warrior. As a matter of fact, she has a a, a business and a book and um, a course on how to effectively pray. And so I'm quite sure, um, Anita, even as you teach your course, you have to be intentional about teaching them how they see things because most times we see things just from doom and gloom but that's not the way that you get your prayers answered 
you have to go to God really with the solution. And the only way you can go to God with the solution is you must know his word. So thank you so much, Anita. Um, anyone else, any, any comments, any questions about tonight? And so I have a question too, and I'm gonna type it in. What lens will you begin exploring today about your situation? Right? What lens will you begin to explore about your situation? Anita said, yes, about prayer. All right. All right. So listen, if there are no other questions, I'm going to go ahead and end this broadcast. Of course, if those of you who are on replay and you have um, some questions, go still type them in and I will look through the comments and still provide some um, some information for you. Now, look, those of you who want to talk on a one on one basis, I am going to type in my website so that you can go ahead and book a complimentary coaching session from me, okay? Where we can explore what is the challenge that you're dealing with? What are some of the things that you have um, tried to use in the past to be able to overcome this hump, but it didn't work? Let's examine why it didn't work. And then we can move forward into creating a new path that will help you get to the next level. And so if you need someone to just kind of um, pull things out of you, because really as a coach, we ask the questions, we know that the answer is already within you. And so we just have strategic questions to pull the answer out. But on top of that, we have strategies. Now that you have the answer, how can I implement it? And so if you need some assistance in, pulling out, you know, what's already in you, but then also some strategies to help you get from point A to point Z, then I would say go ahead and type, uh, go to LaShondaLee.com, apply for a complimentary coaching session. Um, there are a few questions that you have to ask, and then we will review them. And if it's going to be a good fit, then we're going to reach out to you and say, hey, listen, it's a go. Let's go ahead and flush this out. We're still early in the year. And so now is the time to really get that mindset together, right? That mindset, you know, you got to know that successful people are comfortable with being uncomfortable. You have to be able to emulate the habits of successful people so that you can get the positive results too. So we want to elevate that mindset because your mindset will determine your thoughts. Your thoughts will determine your actions and your actions will determine your results. And so if you're not getting the results that you really want, then go ahead and book a complimentary coaching session and let's go ahead and figure some things out. All right. And so, look, you all enjoy the rest of your evening. God bless you. Thank you for being on tonight. I'm looking forward to seeing you on the next training. My goal is to be able to do between one and three live trainings every single week. All right. So just stay tuned and uh, I'll be bringing those trainings to you because, again, I want to help you get from where you are to where you want to be. And those of you who are participating in my online course, I'm going to look into scheduling us a live virtual classroom session really soon so that all of us can get together, celebrate the wins, talk about some of our challenges, um, uh, talk about some aha moments and just really where is your life right now? since you've been taking this course, um, becoming your beautiful, authentic self. All right. So listen, God bless you. I'll talk to you a little bit later. All right. Bye-bye.